I gotta admit, whenever I hear biometric scanners, it's hard for me to not instantly start conjuring up images of a secret agent breaking into a fortified facility by like plucking some dude's eye out of his skull and using it to bypass the scanner or some vault door or something. But oh the fact of the matter is that both the definition and application of this technology tend to fall more into the everyday use category. Biometrics is defined roughly as the analysis of biological data using statistical methods, also including the use of digital scanners, which utilize physiological traits as a way of personal identification. While that may sound like a really technical, boring definition, the most common place one runs into such futuristic concepts and hardware is something very technical and boring, a hospital. In fact, thanks in large part to the original Star Trek series, which spurred their invention, heads-up biometric displays have been in operation at hospitals for decades now. There, nurses and doctors work to analyze changing factors such as your heart rate, blood pressure, and fluid levels to determine whether you've come down with the Ebola or you're just faking it to get away from your obnoxious boss. Biometric security scanners, on the other hand, work by analyzing physiological characteristics that are unlikely to change over time, such as fingerprints, retinas, or voice patterns. Voice patterns. Voice patterns. To verify the identity of an individual. For businesses and governmental agencies, the use of these devices is becoming more and more common with each passing day, with important facilities from private engineering firms to airports and military bases starting to implement them in ways ways that not only help to ensure secured access, but also help to monitor and verify that important documents such as shipping manifestos or top secret weapons plans have been handled and delivered accordingly. Changing gears to the personal side of the spectrum, offerings have just started emerging that are putting this technology to great use. Many of our viewers out there who are lucky enough to have their hands on either an iPhone 6 with Touch ID or a Galaxy S5 with its fingerprint scanner can actually speak directly to the benefits of this amazing future technology. Not only do they gain increased security on their personal devices, but there's a certain ease of access that comes along with this implementation as well as one merely needs to press their finger on the appropriate place to quickly unlock their phone. Also, with the iPhone's offering, you get the ability to make purchases with the swipe of a finger, which helps by eliminating the need for them to hand personal information to retailers every time they make a purchase. Convenient? and secure. But of course, those of you lucky enough to own one of these devices is probably also aware of the many reports that claim that hackers have been able to defeat these security measures in certain instances. And while the chances of that happening to uh, an average Joe individual are probably actually less likely than your standard type of, you know, 1234 or 6969 type of hack, it goes without saying that this is one of the pitfalls of automated design. While a standard locker analog device such as a vault dial might not be able to distinguish between users that are allowed access or not allowed access, it also actually gains some of its strength from this lack of features as the owner can easily prevent unwanted access by making sure that the key or the combination to either of them is never misplaced. Whereas if someone defeats a biometric scanner, they are ostensibly considered to be you by whatever program they've accessed, possibly preventing the realization that there has ever Ever been any intrusion at all. And none of this even mentions the sorts of ordinary hurdles that need to be ironed out with any of these emerging technologies like creating an eye scanner that doesn't slowly burn your retinas out over time. Although, on the bright side, I guess it wouldn't matter then if you had your eye plucked out by a secret agent in that scenario. Great job. Speaking of plucking, that's something that you won't have to do if you're subscribed to today's episode sponsor, Dollar Shave Club. For just a couple of bucks a month, they deliver razors and other high quality bathroom supplies straight to your door so you don't have to leave the house to look like you left your house and groomed yourself properly. I mean, you still have to do the grooming part. That's important. You have to like, you know, put on the Dr. Carver shave butter, you know, use the razor to shave your face and then put on Dollar Shave Club's aftershave and then make sure that you wipe your butt so you don't smell with their One Wipe Charlie's Peppermint Scented Butt Wipes for Men. Dollar Shave Club is available in the US, Canada, and Australia. It's affordable and saves you time. I don't know what there is to not like other than that scary man in their commercials. I'm just kidding. I like you very much. Please don't stop sponsoring us. Thank you for watching, guys. Thank you to Dollar Shave Club, which 
By the way, we have a link in the video description if you want to check it out and start saving your time and money. Thank you to me for hosting this video. I think I'm running out of gas here. Like this video if you liked it. Dislike it if you disliked it. Leave a comment if you have suggestions for future Fastest Possible episodes just like this one. And as always, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already.